Hey everyone. So I heard that you want to integrate live video streaming to your Android application and you have some questions about it like what is a channel profile? How to set a client role or how do you even get started? Well, in this particular video, we will be answering all these questions and along with that, we will be building a sample application to demonstrate the live video streaming functionality of the Agora SDK. So without any further ado, let's have a quick look at what we will be building in this particular video. And that's what we will be building today. We'll have multiple broadcasters broadcasting their stream to a particular channel and we'll have millions of audience members subscribed to their particular stream. And after that, we'll have some basic functionalities at the bottom uh, for muting and unmuting your microphone, then to toggle your camera and finally to disconnect the call. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, so we begin by probably the most obvious step of this particular video that is installing the dependencies. And lucky for us, we only have one single dependency for this particular application, that is the Agora Android SDK. And to install that, we will be heading on to the Jetpack website, that is jetpack.io. And over here, we'll be searching for the Agora SDK itself. Now, clicking on this lookup button will give you all the latest version of the Android SDK that is available and clicking on this get it button will give you the instructions on how to install that particular SDK to your particular Android application. So using this instruction, let's head on to our Android Studio and use it in our application. So to install the dependencies into your application, we will be moving on to the project level build Gradle, inside which we will be adding the URL to the Jetpack uh, under the all projects section. Now, once you have done that, simply save this particular file and move to the module level build Gradle. Over here, we will be adding the latest version of the Agora Android SDK. So right now, we are running the version 3.5.0.3. Now, adding this particular version and saving it, uh, you can simply go ahead and click on the Sync Now button, which will create a build for your particular project and after that, you will be able to use the Agora SDK into your application. Now, once your Gradle files have synced successfully, uh, you can head into the manifest folder and move to the Android manifest file. And over here, we will be adding all the user permissions uh, for that's required for any general RTC application. These permissions can range from your camera, microphone, network stage, your Bluetooth, so on and so forth. So once you have added all these permissions, simply save this particular file and we are all set up for our own live video streaming application. Now we can go ahead and create, write the Kotlin code for this particular live video streaming application. Now, once you have completed your project setup, we can go ahead and create our own project layout. Now, one thing to note over here is that Agora gives you the complete freedom to make your own project layout. So what that means is that you can make your own layout, give any customizations you want, make any tweaks as you want. Uh, and for this particular video, we will be using a very basic example of a layout. Uh, so inside the layout folder, I have two particular files that is the activity main and the video activity. Now the activity main is the first or the main screen of this particular application which has two input fields the first one is the text input field for the channel name and the second one is the radio group for the user role that is the audience or the broadcaster now once the user has given both the inputs there is a submit button or the join channel button towards the end and once the user presses this particular button both the inputs are sent to the next page that is the video activity page or the live streaming page now over here i am using frame layout to display the video of the local host that is the top view uh, over here in the stack and the remote host that is the bottom bottom part of this particular stack and over here at the bottom i am using a linear layout uh, for three buttons that is to toggle your microphone, to disconnect the call, and to toggle your camera. Now using this particular UI as the reference point, let's go ahead and add functionality to this. 
Now, inside our main activity file, we begin by adding a content view, which refers to the activity main layout file. And inside the onCreate method itself, I am creating a function called request permission, which is responsible for asking two major permissions. That is the camera permission and microphone permission which is pretty standard for any live streaming video application. Now moving on, we will be declaring another function called onSubmit, which is triggered every time we press the join channel button, which is present inside the activity main layout file. Now this particular function has three main users. The first one being that it reads the state of the channel name and the user role that has been given as an input from the user inside the activity main layout file. The second one is that it creates a variable called user role, which assigns it an integer value uh, depending upon the role that the user has selected, such that if you have selected a role of an audience member, it assigns it a value of zero. And subsequently, if you have selected a role of a broadcaster, then it assigns it a value of one. And finally, it passes all the values of the, of the channel name as well as of the user role to the next page that is the video activity page using the intents. Moving on, we will be creating a new file called constants.kt, which will be responsible for holding all the constants value that will be that we will be using in this particular application. So over here we have two major constants that is the app ID and the token value. Now, if you're new to the Agora platform, then I recommend you to follow the link in the description down below on how to use your app ID and token into your particular application. Now, moving on to the video activity page, we'll begin by creating a content view which refers to the video activity layout file. And after that, we will be creating three variables for our Agora RTC engine class for the channel name and for the user role. Now we will be assigning values to the channel name and the user role variable using the intent that we have created inside the main activity file. Now, once we have done that, we will be uh, creating a function inside the onCreate method and we will be naming it init agora engine and join channel, which is responsible for all the major functions that occurs, that occurs during the course of this particular live stream. Now, Let's break down the whole process and go step by step and see what exactly is required while making a live video streaming application using the Agora SDK. So the first step is to initialize the SDK, which is done using the create method, which requires three main parameters. That is the base context, the app ID that is stored in the constants.kt file and the object to the Agora RTC engine event handler class or IRTC engine event handler class. Now, this event handler class is responsible for all the events that occurs during the course of a live stream. Now, we will be using three particular uh, event handlers over here. That is the on user join, which is responsible for every time a remote host joins a particular channel. Then on user offline, which is responsible for every single time a remote user leaves the particular channel. And finally, on join channel success, which is responsible for every single time a local user joins the channel. Now, moving on to the second step where we will be setting a channel profile of uh, live video broadcasting. And after that, setting a client role depending upon the user input that has been given in the main activity file. And then in the third step where we will be using uh, two main methods, the first one being enable video and then setting up the local video uh, for the local user. And after that, we will be using the information like the token value and the channel name to join a particular channel. Now, let's go ahead and declare this particular function called setup local video. This particular function is responsible for displaying the local video view feed. Uh, to do this, we will first of all uh, create a container, which basically refers to the frame layout that we have declared inside the video activity, video activity uh, layout file. And after that, we will be creating a renderer view, which is used to cast the local video view feed to this particular container. And after that, we'll be using the method called setup local video, uh, which is used to define all the properties of this local video, such as its fit, the UID, etc. 
After that, we will be declaring a function called join channel, which takes few additional parameters like token, channel name, optional info, and UID. Uh, now, passing zero as the UID means that uh, you let Agora SDK assign an integer value to the UID on its own. After this, we will be declaring a function called setup remote video, which is triggered every single time uh, the on user joint callback is triggered. This particular function is responsible for displaying the remote video view feed and is very much similar to the setup local video. Uh, it's just that it refers to the container for the local, remote video view feed and it casts the view of the remote user to the, uh, to the container. Now, once this has been done, we use the function or method called setup remote video uh, to define the properties of this particular remote video view feed such as fit and UID and finally we add tag to this particular renderer view so as to distinguish between the different views and finally we create another function called on remote user left so as to remove a particular view uh, when a remote host leaves the particular channel and with this we uh, have a basic live video streaming application ready with us. Now let's go ahead and add functionality to the buttons placed at the bottom. So to begin with, we'll be adding functionality of muting the local audio stream or to toggle the uh, microphone. So to do that, we will be declaring a Boolean variable which toggles its value when clicked. Now based upon this particular value, we will be uh, changing the color of this particular button from white to blue and blue to white. Uh, and also we will be using a method provided by the Agora RTC engine called mute local audio stream and we will be passing this particular boolean value to toggle the microphone state uh, for the local audio stream. Moving on, we will be declaring another function to switch the camera state from front to rear and to do this we will be calling the function provided by the RTC engine class that is the switch camera and finally to end the call we'll simply call the finish method now uh, to end this particular application we'll just simply create an on destroy method which will uh, which will have two main uh, functions the first one being to call the leave channel from the rtc engine class and secondly to free up all the resources from the rtc engine object now let's go ahead and see how this app actually looks now, once you have built your application, you'll have a prompt, something similar to this, where it will ask for your camera as well as your microphone permission. Now, on accepting these permissions, you'll have a login screen where on the top, you'll have a prompt for the channel name. So for over here, I am going to enter the channel name test. And in the middle, you'll find two radio buttons for the user row, that is the audience or the broadcaster row. So let's go ahead and select the broadcaster role and press on this join channel button. Now this will take us to the test channel uh, of the Agora live video stream. Now this video at the top uh, shows the Android emulator video, the default video that the Android emulator provides. Uh, now let me join this particular channel through my physical device so as to give you an example of how this particular application looks when there are two or more hosts present inside this video. So that's uh, how the application looks when there are two or more hosts present in the side of this video. Now, at the bottom, you can find three buttons over here. So the first one is to mute and unmute your microphone. And over here on the right side, you'll find this button to switch your camera from front to rear. So by clicking on uh, this button, it will shift your camera to the rear view. And finally, in the middle, you'll find this button to disconnect your call and bring bring it back to the main screen. And so on, you can join this particular channel as an audience and hence view the stream of the broadcaster that's there inside that particular channel. And that's all for this particular video. Now, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
And also, please make sure to comment down below on what all topics would you like us to cover in the upcoming videos.